Paleo Indians. Paleo Indians or Paleo Americans is a classification term given to the first peoples who entered and subsequently inhabited the Americas during the final glacial episodes of the late Pleistocene period. The prefix paleo comes from the Greek adjective paleos, pi alpha lambda alpha iota o micron sigma, meaning old or ancient. The term paleo Indians applies specifically to the lithic period in the Western Hemisphere and is distinct from the term paleolithic. Evidence suggests big animal hunters crossed the Bering Strait from Eurasia into North America over a land and ice bridge, Beringia, that existed between 45000-12000 BCE, 47000-14000 BP. Small isolated groups of hunter-gatherers migrated alongside herds of large herbivores far into Alaska from 16500-13500 BCE, 18500-15500 BP. Ice-free corridors developed along the Pacific coast and valleys of North America. This allowed animals, followed by humans, to migrate south into the interior. The people went on foot to use primitive boats along the coastline. The precise dates and roots of the peopling of the New World are subject to ongoing debate. Stone tools, particularly projectile points and scrapers, are the primary evidence of the earliest human activity in the Americas. Crafted lithic flake tools are used by archaeologists and anthropologists to classify cultural periods. Scientific evidence links indigenous Americans to Asian peoples, specifically eastern Siberian populations. Indigenous peoples of the Americas have been linked to Siberian populations by linguistic factors, the distribution of blood types, and in genetic composition as reflected by molecular data, such as DNA. There is evidence for at least two separate migrations between 8,000-7,000 BCE, 10,000-9,000 years BP, the climate stabilized, leading to a rise in population and lithic technology advances, resulting in more sedentary lifestyle. Migration into the Americas, the specifics of Paleo-Indian migration to and throughout the Americas, including the exact dates and routes traveled a subject to ongoing research and discussion. The traditional theory has been that these early migrants moved into the Beringia land bridge between eastern Siberia and present-day Alaska around 40,000 to 17,000 years ago, when sea levels were significantly lowered due to the Quaternary glaciation. These people are believed to have followed herds of now-extinct Pleistocene megafauna along ice-free corridors that stretched between the Laurentide and Cordillera and ice sheets. Another route proposed is that, either on foot or using primitive boats, they migrated down the Pacific coast to South America. Evidence of the latter would since have been covered by a sea-level rise of hundreds of meters. Following the last ice age, archaeologists contend that Paleo-Indians' migration out of Beringia Western Alaska, ranges from 40,000 to around 16,500 years ago. This time range is a source of debate and promises to continue as such for years to come. The few agreements achieved to date are the origin from Central Asia, with widespread habitation of the Americas during the end of the last glacial period, or more specifically what is known as the Late Glacial Maximum around 16,000 to 13,000 years before present. However, alternative theories about the origins of Paleo-Indians exist, including migration from Europe, Paleo-Indian periods, sites in Alaska, East Beringia, and where some of the earliest evidence has been found of Paleo-Indians, followed by archaeological sites in northern British Columbia. Western Alberta and the Old Crow Flats region in the Yukon. The Paleo-Indian would eventually flourish all over the Americas. These peoples were spread over a wide geographical area, 
Thus there were regional variations in lifestyles. However, all the individual groups shared a common style of stone tool production, making napping styles and progress identifiable. This early Paleo-Indian period lithic reduction tool adaptations have been found across the Americas, utilized by highly mobile bands consisting of approximately 20 to 60 members of an extended family. Food would have been plentiful during the few warm months of the year. Lakes and rivers were teeming with many species of fish, birds and aquatic mammals, nuts, berries and edible roots could be found in the forests and marshes. The fall would have been a busy time because foodstuffs would have to be stored in clothing made, ready for the winter. During the winter, coastal fishing groups moved inland to hunt and trap fresh food and furs. Late Ice Age climatic changes cause plant communities and animal populations to change. Groups moved from place to place as preferred resources were depleted and new supplies were sought. Small bands utilized hunting and gathering during the spring and summer months, then broke into smaller direct family groups for the fall and winter. Family groups moved every three to six days possibly covering up to 360 kilometers, 220 miles, a year. Diets were often sustaining and rich in protein due to successful hunting. Clothing was made from a variety of animal hides that were also used for shelter construction. During much of the early and middle Paleo-Indian periods, inland bands are thought to have subsisted primarily through hunting now extinct megafauna. Large Pleistocene mammals were the giant beaver, stepwise and muskox, mastodons, woolly mammoths and ancient reindeer, early caribou, the Clovis culture, appearing around 11,500 BCE, 13,500 BP, undoubtedly did not rely exclusively on megafauna for subsistence. Instead, they employed a mixed foraging strategy that included smaller terrestrial game, aquatic animals, and a variety of flora. Paleo-Indian groups were efficient hunters and carried a variety of tools. These included highly efficient fluted style spear points, as well as microblades used for butchering and hide processing. Projectile points and hammerstones made from many sources are found traded and moved to new locations. Stone tools were traded and or left behind from North Dakota and Northwest Territories to Montana and Wyoming. Trade routes also have been found from the British Columbia interior to the coast of California. The glaciers that covered the northern half of the continent began to gradually melt, exposing new land for occupation around 17,500 to 14,500 years ago. At the same time as this was occurring, worldwide extinctions among the large mammals began. In North America, camels and horses eventually died off, the latter not to reappear on the continent until the Spanish reintroduced the species near the end of the 15th century CE. As the quaternary extinction event was happening, the late Paleo-Indians would have relied more on other means of subsistence. From 105009500 BC, 12500-11500 BP, the broad-spectrum big-game hunters of the Great Plains began to focus on a single animal species, the bison, an early cousin of the American bison. The earliest known of these bison-oriented hunting traditions is the Folsom tradition. Folsom peoples traveled in small family groups for most of the year returning yearly to the same springs in other favored locations on higher ground, that they would camp for a few days, perhaps erecting a temporary shelter, making and or repairing some stone tools, or processing some meat. Then, moving on, Paleo-Indians were not numerous and population densities were quite low. Archaic Periods the Archaic period in the Americas saw a changing environment featuring a warmer, more arid climate, and the disappearance of the last megafauna. 
The majority of population groups at this time were still highly mobile hunter-gatherers, but now individual groups started to focus on resources available to them locally. Thus with the passage of time there is a pattern of increasing regional generalization like the Southwest, Arctic, Poverty, Dalton and Plano traditions. These regional adaptations would become the norm, with reliance less on hunting and gathering, and a more mixed economy of small game, fish, seasonally wild vegetables and harvested plant foods. Many groups continued to hunt big game but their hunting traditions became more varied and meat procurement methods more sophisticated. The placement of artifacts and materials within an archaic burial site indicated social differentiation based upon status in some groups. Classification Paleo-Indians are generally classified by lithic reduction or lithic core styles and by regional adaptations. Lithic technology fluted spear points, like other spear points, are collectively called projectile points. The projectiles are constructed from chipped stones that have a long groove called a flute. The spear points would typically be made by chipping a single flake from each side of the point. The point was then tied onto a spear of wood or bone. As the environment changed due to the Ice Age ending around 17 to 13 car BP on short, and 25 to 27 car BP on the long, many animals migrated overland to take advantage of the new sources of food. Humans following these animals, such as bison, mammoth and mastodon, thus gained the name Big Game in Hunters. Pacific coastal groups of the period would have relied on fishing as the prime source of sustenance. Archaeologists are piecing together evidence that the earliest human settlements in North America were thousands of years before the appearance of the current Paleo-Indian time frame, before the late glacial maximum 20,000 plus years ago. Evidence indicates that people were living as far east as northern Yukon in the glacier-free zone called Beringia before 30,000 BCE, 32,000 BP. Until recently, it was generally believed that the first Paleo-Indian people to arrive in North America belonged to the Clovis culture. This archaeological phase was named after the town of Clovis, New Mexico, where in 1936 unique Clovis points were found in situ at the site of Blackwater Draw where they were directly associated with the bones of Pleistocene animals. Recent data from a series of archaeological sites throughout the Americas suggest that Clovis, thus the Paleo-Indians, time range should be re-examined. In particular, sites located near Cactus Hill in Virginia, Meadowcroft Rock Shelter in Pennsylvania, Monte Verde in Chile, Topper in South Carolina. In Quintana Roo in Mexico have generated early dates for wide-ranging Paleo-Indian occupation. Some sites significantly predate the migration time frame of ice-free corridors, thus suggesting that there were additional coastal migration routes available, traversed either on foot and or in boats. Geological evidence suggests the Pacific coastal route was open for overland travel before 23,000 years ago and after 16,000 years ago. South America. In South America, the site of Monte Verde indicates that its population was probably territorial and resided in the river basin for most of the year. Some other South American groups, on the other hand, were highly mobile and hunted big game animals such as mastodon and giant sloths. They used classic bifacial projectile point technology. The primary examples are populations associated with El Jobo points, Venezuela, Fishtail and Magdalene's points, various parts of the continent, but mainly the southern half, and Pajan points, Peru and Ecuador, at sites in grasslands, savanna plains, and patchy forests. The dating for these sites ranges from 14,000 BP, for Timur Timur in Venezuela, to 10,000 BP. 
The bi-pointed El Jobo projectile points were mostly distributed in northwestern Venezuela, from the Gulf of Venezuela to the high mountains and valleys. The population using them were hunter-gatherers that seemed to remain within a certain circumscribed territory. El Jobo points were probably the earliest. Going back to sea, 12,980 and 14,200 BP and they were used for hunting large mammals. In contrast, the fish tail points, dating to c. 11,000 BP, in Patagonia, had a much wider geographical distribution, but mostly in the central and southern part of the continent. Archaeogenetics the haplogroup most commonly associated with indigenous Amerindian genetics is haplogroup QM3. Y-DNA, like mtDNA, differs from other nuclear chromosomes in that the majority of the Y chromosome is unique and does not recombine during meiosis. This allows the historical pattern of mutations to be easily studied. The pattern indicates indigenous Amerindians experienced two very distinctive genetic episodes. First with the initial peopling of the Americas, and secondly with European colonization of the Americas. The former is the determinant factor for the number of gene lineages and founding haplotypes present in today's indigenous Amerindian populations. Human settlement of the New World occurred in stages from the Bering Sea coastline, with an initial layover on Beringia for the founding population. The microsatellite diversity and distributions of the Y lineage specific to South America indicates that certain Amerindian populations have been isolated since the initial colonization of the region. The Nardene, Inuit, and indigenous Alaskan populations. However, exhibit haplogroup Q, Y-DNA, mutations that are distinct from other indigenous Amerindians with various mtDNA mutations. This suggests that the earliest migrants into the northern extremes of North America and Greenland derived from later migrant populations. See also, references, further reading, external links, Atlas of the Human Journey. Genographic Project, National Geographic, Journey of Mankind, Genetic Map, Bradshaw Foundation, The Palia Indian Period, United States Department of the Interior, National Park Service, Alabama Archaeology, Prehistoric Alabama, The University of Alabama, Department of Archaeology, The Palia Indian Database, The University of Tennessee, Department of Anthropology. Palia Indians and the Great Pleistocene Die Off, American Academy of Arts and Sciences, National Humanities Center.